Hello and welcome back to this tutorial series on creating a World of Warcraft fishing bot AI using OpenCV, Python, and computer vision. Today we're going to get started on actually building one of the most important parts of the uh, AI agent, which is the ability to capture and view the screen. But before we get started with that, I want to quickly make sure that you are set up with Python. So make sure that you have Python 3 installed. I won't be walking through that. I'm going to assume that at this point you've already installed Python. And we're also going to be using some libraries today. Um, so first, I want to make sure that you have the Python image library, or sometimes called Pillow, installed. So you want to use your pip package manager. In some installations, it'll be pip3 for Python 3. In my case, it's just pip. So pip install pillow. This is Python's image library. In my case, it's already installed. In your case, it may or may not be, so make sure that that's installed. You want to also make sure that we have installed NumPy. This is the numerical library for Python. Again, I already have it. You may or may not. And last, today, we're going to be using OpenCV. This is the computer vision library. So pip install, and you want to use OpenCV dash Python. This is the Python version of OpenCV. Again, in my case, already installed. So make sure that you have those packages installed, and then we're ready. So let's go ahead and create our main.py. I'm going to do that now. Let me, let me go here, main.py, okay. And main.py is going to act as kind of the entry point or the master control of our application. So we will be creating other Python files later, but for now, just think of main.py as the core of the application. And we want to go ahead and import some of those key packages that we uh, just discussed. So we want to import so from pill, so this is the pillow library, but it's imported as PIL, Python image library. We want to import image and we want to import image grab. Next from, uh, uh, we want to import the NumPy package. And it's pretty standard to call that uh, MP. And last we want to import CV2. This is the open CV package. And I like to import it as CV just out of habit. You don't have to do that. That's totally up to you. Okay. Now we want to go ahead and start creating our, again, the, the core functionality of this program, which is going to be capturing and viewing the screen. So let's define a function called update screen. I'm just going to put pass in there to avoid any errors for now. This is going to be the function that will be running to continually capture our screen. And let's go ahead as well and set this up. If name equals main, this way we can directly run that function right now. Okay, so so all this does is this allows this uh, this allows this Python file to be run as a uh, the main file, and it tells it exactly what to do in the case that I run this file. So if I run this file right now, it's going to enter at this entry point because the file that's being run by Python will have the name underscore underscore main underscore underscore, and what it's going to do is call this function. It just passes so nothing happens at this point in time. Okay, so this will be the, the format of today's application. And now we're gonna go ahead and get started actually building our, our AI. So the first thing we need to do is we need to capture the screen. So image grab from the pill library has a, is a great utility to do that. So let's go ahead and create a variable called screenshot equals image grab. dot grab and what this is going to do is this is going to take a snapshot of our desktop okay now what we want to do is we want to take that data and we want to put it into open cv so that open cv can pop properly read it understand it and start to use it to make make decisions but 
OpenCV cannot directly work with that screenshot. We have to do some manipulation. The first thing we have to do is we have to take that screenshot and we want to turn that into a NumPy array. Luckily, that's very, very simple to do. We're going to go ahead and just save it in the same variable. So we're just going to overwrite the, the previous variable. And we're just going to call that np for NumPy dot array. So we're creating an array and we're creating that from the screenshot. So now we've stored that image as a NumPy array in the same variable. Next, um, this is a uh, uh, important step, which is OpenCV, most images use RGB color. Most of us are familiar with RGB, but OpenCV actually uses BGR, blue, green, red. So the blue and the red channels are flipped. And we wanna, we wanna correct for this immediately so that the image comes in exactly how OpenCV expects to read that. So OpenCV provides a function to do so. So again, we're gonna overwrite the same variable since we're just kind of manipulating this as an input. So we're gonna do screenshot equals CV or CV2 in your case if you did not rename it like I did. CV dot, we're gonna do convert color. Now the source matrix is gonna be our screenshot. And next we wanna provide it with the conversion. So we're gonna do CV dot color underscore RGB to BGR. So this is going to convert, basically it's going to flip those B and R uh, uh, columns and it's going, to, it's going to turn that from a RGB image into a BGR image. Okay, now we should have a screenshot that's, that's going to look pretty good. So let's actually test it out and see what it looks like. So let's, uh, let's use OpenCV to actually create a window and look at this screenshot. So we're going to do cv.imshow. This will create a window that will allow us to look at an image, image data. And we have to give it a name. So let's call this computer vision. OK, and then let's pass in the screenshot. Now, if we run this application as it is right now, you're not going to see anything happen. And the reason is, is that this function happened so quickly that that window is created and destroyed. And before we even really get a chance to look at it. So we actually want to stop the program so that we can actually digest and look at that image. So CV also provides a uh, function for that, which is the wait key. So if we do cv.waitkey0, this will have a hold until we press a key. If I were to do CV wait key 100, this would be a 100 millisecond delay. So let's just make it hold as long as we want till we press a key. Okay, and now let's run the application and see what happens. Okay, so you can see that it spawned a window of the dimensions of my screen, so that's why it's so large, and it's exactly the pixels that were shown on the screen at that time, so it looks like everything is working properly. We have a, a nice screenshot in a format that OpenCV can recognize. Okay, so go ahead and close that. Okay, and if your Python is still running, just kill that. Okay, next we want to, um, well actually let's, let's look at what would happen if we forgot to, to do the RGB to BGR conversion, just for fun. Just to show you what would happen. If we forgot to do that, you're still gonna get something that actually looks halfway decent, but you're gonna notice that a lot of the colors, especially your reds and blues, don't look right. So some of the greens look pretty close, but the because the G, the G is still in the middle, it's RGB VGR. So your green channel is going to be the same pretty much, but the other channels are not. And that's why you get kind of this this weird looking color. So if you see this in the future, just think, oh, maybe I forgot to switch the color channels to the correct channels for OpenCV. OK, so I'm going to kill that. So now we know the program is working. We're, we're capturing a screenshot. We're converting that to an array and we're, we're putting that into OpenCV. Now let's take it one step further. We, we don't want just a screenshot that's static. We want to view this thing live. So how are we going to do that? Well, what we're going to do is we are going to perform this operation continuously over and over and over again. And the best way to do that is using a while loop. So what, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a while true loop, which will 
last forever, infinitely running. And that's going to cause this, these lines of code to execute over and over and over and over again. And what, before we run this, because it's going to execute forever, you're going to have to manually kill it. We can also introduce a way to to kill this and break the loop ourselves, with you know, uh, in a more efficient way. So let's let's go ahead and do that right now. So what we can do is the CV wait key. We can add a delay. Let's add a delay of like one millisecond. And what it's going to do is it's going to look every one millisecond to see if a key was pressed and we can actually store that key. So we can say key equals CV dot wait key one. Okay. So every one millisecond, it's going to pause. It's going to look and see was a key pressed. Next, what we want to do is we want to check, is that key the right key? So what we're going to do is we're going to do an if key, equals ord q let's use q for quit break so it'll break this loop oops make sure it's a comparator and not a, a, not assigning that so the the value that's placed into key is not going to be a string q it's going to be the integer value of that key so that's why we want to compare this with the integer value of q the ord v value. So use this to convert the letter Q, the string Q, or I should say the character Q into its uh, integer. And we can compare that. So while this is running, this is going to run forever. And every one millisecond, it's going to check was the Q key pressed. If the Q key is pressed, it should break us out of the loop and, and prevent this from running forever. So let's try it. And let's see. Okay, let me try that again. All right, I'm not sure what just happened, but now it's working right. Something just bugged out on my computer. Oh, you know, we didn't fix the channel, so let's try the Q. Yep, Q quits, so that works good. So let's put this channel back on. I'm going to uncomment that. Okay, so let's run this. Okay, perfect. So you can see that what we have now is this while loop. It's constantly grabbing a screenshot every one millisecond. It's converting the colors, putting it into a NumPy array, converting it, CV is loading it in, and then C OpenCV is showing it to us live. So you can see that that's why it looks kind of strange here. Okay? If I do this, you get that mirror effect. So just to, to show you that it's working, I'm trying to put it over to the side here. So you can see that that's updating pretty quickly. And then if we press the Q button, it breaks that loop in the, in the application exits. So it looks like, oops, it looks like, I'm gonna clear my terminal. So it looks like we have a robust, relatively simple but robust way to continuously capture screen data in this variable screenshot. And we can confirm that by looking at that, okay? So next, it's nice to get an idea of how many frames per second is your application running at? We want to kind of get a baseline for if our implementation is working properly. What we don't want is a bot that's viewing data at five frames per second or one frame per second. Things are going to update so slowly that it won't, won't be able to make good decisions. So let's add a logic that will allow us to view the time it takes to execute each loop of the while loop and we can calculate then how many frames per second this, this is running at at this time. So to do that, let's import the time library. This is a standard library with Python, so you won't need to install that. And let's assign a variable called t0. This will be you know, the, the initial time. And let's set that to time.time. .time. So the first time we call this function, it's going to set that t0 to that time. And then at the end of every execution we can do a print and we'll say uh, FPS let's actually let me undo that let's do this first so we'll say t1 equals or we'll say uh, we'll 
We'll say the executed time is equal to time dot time. So it's going to take another step snapshot of time, and it's going to subtract that from that that t zero value. So that'll be the time in seconds that have occurred from here to here. Okay, time in seconds. And then what we want to do is we want to print that out and we want to print it out in, it's more useful in frames per second than thinking about milliseconds. So what we can then do is we can say print, we can say our frames per second is equal to, and then we want to convert this to a string since we're going to be concatenating it with that FPS string. And we want to say, since this is going to be in seconds, we want to do one divided by execution time. Okay, so if our execution, so if this took 100 milliseconds, that means that 1 divided by 0.1 is 10. That means that this system is running at 10 frames every second. Okay, and then last, we need to set t0 to time.time. Dot time. So we have to update t0. If we don't, it's going to start comparing it with an older and older time, and it's not going to work properly. Okay. So let's run this and see if we can, let's see how many frames per second we're getting out of this application. Okay, so you can see it's running on my screen and I'm getting about 20 to 30 frames per second, which is reasonable because keep in mind, in addition to running this application, I'm also capturing the screen and whatnot for this video. So my computer's under a little bit more taxation than yours is. But Regardless, if we can get 20 to 30 frames per second or more, then we're in pretty good shape for what we're trying to accomplish with this uh, application. So I think this is a good place to end the first step. So hopefully this was informative. So you can see that with just you know 20 or so lines of code, we've already created a way to capture data live um, and, and start to analyze our, our agent's performance as far as speed and whatnot. So stick with us, and in the next video, we'll take this another step further. So thank you, and hope to see you in the next video.